Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to have a look at Max for Live in Ableton Live 10. So Max for Live is now bundled with Ableton Live so this means that there's no separate installation for Max for Live and as well as that it now loads as soon as we open live so we don't have to wait for it to load when we load a Max instrument. So it's going to be much much faster and all of the Max for Live devices are also now optimized to use a lot less CPU and to load faster as well. So as you can see we've got absolutely tons of Max for Live instruments, MIDI effects and audio effects. So rather than going through them all I'm just going to show you a couple of them, some of the new overhauled ones such as the drum synths and we're going to have a little bit of a jamming session using some of the control devices. So we'll start off with the drum synth kick. So as you can see it has a much nicer interface now. Pretty standard pitch controls. We can use the shift function to move in smaller increments with the pitch. And as you can see, we've got our standard settings such as tone, decay, click and envelope. Let's now get our clap involved. So we'll move across to our next track with the drum synth clap. I'll unmute it, have a play with the settings and then I'll show you the device randomer. So the device randomer, if we click map and then we can click on the title bar of any device and it's going to randomize all of the parameters. So I like this device if you're out of ideas or just want a bit of inspiration or maybe you're just doing a bit of experimental sound design and you're going to resample the results. Next up we've got the drum synth hi-hat. And what we can do with this hi-hat is we can add a bit of expression and modulation using the LFO. So the LFO is a type of modulation source which comes under control devices which is now part of the core library. And you see we get this nice graphical display as well. So let's modulate. Firstly we've got the decay being modulated with a random wave and then we're going to modulate the tone and we'll do that with a sine wave. For this demo I'm just going to stick to the drum synths but there are a ton of different instruments both from users and also from the core Max for Live stuff as well such as Multi and Poly so make sure you check all the instruments out but for now I'll just keep it nice and simple as we build this loop. You can get some nice snappy sounds out of this snare so they're quite flexible all of the drum synths. Next up after our tom we've got the drum synth sampler and all I've done is I've just dropped in a random sample from my library onto this sampler and then it gives us some basic controls for processing that sample. Next up we've got the FM drum synth, so frequency modulation and as you can hear it can sound quite piercing and aggressive but it's capable of quite a lot of sounds and with a little bit of filtering it can sound pretty nice. So let's use that to make a bit of a bass now using a envelope follower. So we can get a bit of a donk bass going. And once again, this envelope follower is now part of the core library. Next up, we've got some symbols. I'm just using this with a side chain to give our top end a bit of a shimmer. Next up we've got the drum sync for Clang and I'm going to use this along with the Convolution Reverb Pro which is one of my favourite reverbs. And we're going to use this to give a bit of depth to our mix now and we're also going to modulate the drum sync for Clang with a LFO. This is where things get really exciting so we have the mono sequencer 
So there's no actual clip on this track. And as you can hear, we can change the pitch, velocity, octave, duration, and repeat to get some pretty interesting sounds just from this simple closed hat. So I'll do a fresh pattern and let's do one from scratch and try and inject some groove into our track. So we'll just do this quite spontaneously and what we can even do is we can hit the random button as well and really randomize the pattern so there's very little human logic gone into this pattern whatsoever. Once again we'll get some more movement into this with the LFO and this is mapped to the auto filter with quite a high resonance to give us some interesting screechy like sounds. Our final track also isn't using any clips. I've got an instance of Instant House, which is a very popular Max for Live device, and it allows us to mess around with pre programmed house patterns. And then we can change the MIDI note that's fired by that particular pattern. So in this case, it's triggering a drum pad. And at the moment, we've just got the kick activated. So we can choose a pad, we can choose the swing, we can choose the velocity with loads of little settings that we can mess around with. So now this loop is starting to come together into something that we could use as the basis of a track, something a little bit techno sounding. And we've got some powerful controls here with the randomized features you can see down in the bottom right hand side of the Instant House plugin. So we're coming to the end of this video now on Max for Live and as you can see it's absolutely brilliant for inspiration and for really experimenting and diving deep with Enableton Live and Max for Live. So as you can see here, I'm really twisting up Instant House using our device randomer, which in turn is twisting up our drum rack. So we can see all the pads getting launched on the drum rack's display. And the sky really is the limit with Max for Live. So guys, that's the end of this video course on Ableton Live 10's new features. And I hope to see you in a future course.